Hello there! I'm doing this voiceover for my final project for my Vikings English course. The title of this video is Weaving and Spinning More Than Just a Female Craft A Glimpse into Icelandic Women and Textile Production Based on Michelle Hayor Smith's Research. Though I am unfamiliar with weaving and spinning, I have decided to research it because not only was it an important craft done by women from all over medieval Europe, but also because at the end of the day, textile work is an art form. While researching, I have learned that Michelle Hayer Smith is both an archaeologist of textiles and a visual artist, as she describes in the following quote. Quote, I'm an archaeologist, but started my professional life as a visual artist. The textile work that I have been focused on for the past six years has permeated my art, and in the process of this analysis, I have taught myself to work on the warp weight loom, a very ancient Neolithic loom that was used across Northern Europe. By teaching myself to weave, it has brought me back to my initial passion, art, and I have begun exploring concepts from my scientific research via visual medium." End quote. So for the creative aspect of my project, in order to parallel Smith's life journey, I will be digitally painting a Valkyrie as she weaves on a warp weight loom while I do a voiceover of the research. To keep this video short, I am looking at three sources, one book and two articles written by Michelle Hayer Smith to weave together a brief history of cloth production in medieval Iceland. The political and economic spheres of Iceland were dominated by men, but textile production was controlled by women, which made its way into all aspects of human existence, from birth to death, and more importantly in the determination of fate. Textiles were used in clothing, household accessories, sails for ships and tents, and women presided over cloth allocation at major rituals of death and regeneration, marriage, and the establishment of new families, investiture, and the transmission of ancestral authority. As explained in Smith's article, Dress, Cloth, and the Farmer's Wife, in Iceland, all textile production was done using the warp weight loom and the drop or high top whorl. When it comes to sail making, an incredibly difficult cloth to identify archaeologically due to poor preservation, it was made using the eyelet stitch. These eyelets served to rig the ship with ropes and they were embroidered or stitched into the sail, helping preserve some fragments of cloth. Experimental ship reconstruction trials in Denmark showcased that wool performed better than linen for making sails, providing more stretch and elasticity in strong winds. In her book The Valkyrie's Loom, The Archaeology of Cloth Production and Female Power in the North Atlantic, Smith addresses the social archaeology of textiles and textiles as a form of material culture that encodes information about the societies who made them. That is because, according to Smith, textiles are like text, which tell a story about the hardships and successes of the lives of the women who made them. Mythological sources and vignettes from the Icelandic sagas suggest that produ production of cloth was viewed as a somewhat spiritual activity, with mythological beliefs that were either frowned upon or feared by men. Literary sources point to the powerful female deities such as Freya, who practiced spinning and that could have been linked to the practice of Seder, a form of ecstatic magic and divination, which men never engaged in due to possible associations with homosexuality. Smith begins her book with the following poem called Dara Yarlod from the Njal Saga, which is what inspired the painting before you. There is of course creative freedom with it as well, but these are the photos that I used as reference. The poem goes like this. Blood rains from the cloudy web on the broad loom of slaughter. The web of men, grey as armour, is now being woven. The Valkyries will cross it with crimson weft. The warp is made of human entrails. Human heads are used as weights. The heddle rods are blood wed spears. The shafts are iron bound and arrows are the shuttles. With swords we will weave this web of battle. This poem showcases the control of others' fates through textile work. The story goes that in Scotland, before the Battle of Clontarf, 
A young man observed 12 female riders approaching a woman's hut and disappearing inside, and when he looked through the window he saw Valkyries weaving cloth on a warp weight loom made from the entrails of men fallen in battle. This is gruesome imagery, and while the sagas should be read with a grain of salt in terms of historical accuracy, they do provide important ethnographic information regarding cultural attitudes in the North Atlantic, such as the belief in women's roles in weaving the fates of men. Finally, in Iceland, textiles were used as a currency in a commodity money system which were legally regulated in medieval law codes for paying taxes and tithes and for trade both local and overseas. Smith's article, Thoris Bargain, Gender, Fadmal, and the Law, shows how Icelandic laws closely, closely governed and protected transactions in cloth. Silver supplies dwindled after the Viking Age, so cloth became Iceland's dominant currency and the legal standards and exchange values for Vodmal, cloth currency, were established after the Althing was founded in 930 after the Common Era. The name Vodmal integrates the Old Norse roots words Vod, stuff or cloth, and Mal, which means measure, to mean cloth measured to a standard. The Van Mal was a woolen two out of two twill of regulated length, width, and fineness, measured by the number of threads per L in its warp and weft systems. And it is believed that the cloth was woven on all farms rather than being a commodity whose production was monopolized by the elite. Good cloth was so highly valued that penalties existed for those who produced inadequate Van Mal and who attempted to cheat the buyer by trading in false elves or providing cheap quality cloth. In the end, Iceland's archaeological textile collections are plentiful and have been preserved in deep deposits and many farm sites, where excavations have yielded a substantial corpus of an estimated number ranging between 4,000 and 6,000 fragments. To conclude, Michelle Heyer-Smith has done extensive research into textile production in the North Atlantic, and this paper was merely a glimpse into a broader field of study. Weaving and spinning define all aspects of people's lives and were so important that certain female deities were associated with the craft. Not only that, but many spiritual rituals were, con were centered around it. Finally, the value of cloth became more important than silver after the Viking expansion, so much that it was used as currency and codified in Icelandic law.